In other words, I came here to, from Alabama this weekend to tell you to keep praying. I came here to tell you, you matter. I came here to tell every praying mother and father, every praying grandmother in this room, every praying grandfather, your prayers are making more of a difference than you know. You cannot stop. And the enemy's been trying to wear you out and wear you down and make you mentally, physically exhausted. He will do anything to make you stop praying. He will do anything to discourage your faith. Just anything to make you quit. But God told me to come from Alabama and tell you this morning, don't you ever give up. You can't quit. Everything, everything is at stake. I learned this. Several years ago, and some of you have heard me tell this because I think I have some front porch friends here. They know who they are, and I know who they are. I love them. I learned this several years ago. I have two daughters. My oldest one is here on the front row, and that's Lauren. Lauren, stand up and wave at everybody. That's my oldest daughter. My youngest daughter, Lindsay. I only have the two girls, both raised in the ministry, both in the presence of God. They're probably sixth generation Pentecostal. I mean, it goes back a bit in our family. But I learned this a few years ago when the enemy came in for my youngest daughter. I'm going to talk fast and make a long story intensely short. She, uh, like I said, through the Holy Ghost, his child marries a young man at the ramp who becomes a, he was a minister of the gospel. He was actually pastor of Ramp Church. She was over all the performing arts, all the dance in our school of ministry and our uh, in our conferences, Lindsay was the choreographer for all the dances, for everything, all this stuff. And the enemy targets my daughter, long story short. She takes a detour that is going to lead in the enemy's plan to her complete the destruction of her life. She came to us and said, I have filed for divorce. I am with absolutely no grounds whatsoever. I've Filed for divorce, I'm leaving my husband. She left her family, she left the ministry, she moved to a different town and became a different person. Now, it was in that season my world turned upside down. It sent me into a journey of intercession. And even though I've known the Lord, to be honest with you, since I was eight years old, filled with the Holy Ghost, that journey of intercession changed me forever. And I'll tell you why moms and wives, parents, grandparents, let me tell you why you're, one of the reasons your prayers make such a difference and why they're so effective. Love prays different. So mother, that's why the enemy will try to get you so hurt, even by them, that you just think it'd be better not to hope because hope is hurting me too bad. But if you lose your hope, you lose your faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you lose your hope, you'll throw faith away without faith. You'll never please God in this. God sent them through you for a reason. God knew that Satan was going to sift them like wheat. But he also knew you would be the one saying, but I've prayed for you. And your faith is not going to fail. Come on, it may not look like that right now, but I'm never giving up. I had to make up my mind when Lindsay was gone. It was a few years of a girl I did not know. It was just a matter of setting myself to such prayer, 100% made up my mind that it does not matter what this takes or how long it takes. I remember in the beginning days of that when people were concerned about even with me and even my health and some different ones just concerned, I think, with the pressure that it was on. And they were just saying, now, Karen, you've got to accept this. You've got to learn how to, to go on and not let this destroy you too. And you're going to have to find a way to move on. And I remember, and these were all well-meaning people, and they met with me and discussed this, Karen. You can't let this destroy you too. I remember in the beginning days when she had just left and these people were saying this and meant well, but I remember getting with God and just saying, okay, God, this is the way this works. I've served you my whole life. The enemy has come into my house and taken my daughter. 
more than what means more to me than anything in this world. And, and God, when I look at her, I don't see anything but what the enemy does. When I look at Lindsay, I'm not seeing anything but the enemy has come to steal, to kill, and destroy my daughter. That's all I see is what the enemy does. So I remember saying to God, I remember saying, so God, I've heard what everybody has had to say. I've heard what he said and she said and they said. But God, what do you, God, have to say about my daughter? What is your word? What do you have to say about Lindsay? That for me was the absolute turning point. And I made up my mind. I don't care how long I'll be here, but I will stand in this place until my daughter looks like that word. Come on. Come on. Somebody in this room this morning, you got to leave this place today with a renewed, made up mind. I don't care how long it takes. And I don't care how many meals I miss. I've made up my mind. I came to tell you, you don't have to accept anything that's not the will of God. I know there's some things in life we don't have answers for, and that's another sermon. I don't have time to preach that. There's some things in life that we do not understand, and they're the mysteries of God. And the Bible says of those people that go through those places and hold on to their faith, even after the places of the greatest trial and question. And some of you are sitting in this room today, and you've never understood some places. But let me tell you this. Let me just say this quick. The fact that you're here today and still have your faith with your questions, but your faith has remained. Hebrews calls you those that of whom the world is not worthy. So we honor your faith. But if you today are in a situation that things can still change, then you don't have to accept anything that's not God's will. That's it. All the more reason, all the more reason, you got to know God's will. All the more reason. All the more. If I don't have to accept anything, if it's not his will, you've got to know what his will is. Because when you don't know his will, you lack clarity. And when you are unclear, you are uncertain. And when you are uncertain, you lack confidence. And you pray whiny prayers. You pray prayers like, Lord, help us, God. Help us, Jesus, Jesus, God. Help us, Lord, God in heaven. Help us all, Jesus, Jesus, God. That ain't going to move nothing. No, First John 5, 14 says, and this is our confidence. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we can have whatever we ask. Come on, give God praise if you believe that. Oh, yes. Oh, if I ask anything according to his will, then he's going to hear me and I can have whatever I ask. That's your confidence. That's what makes you come boldly before the throne of God. You say, then Karen, how will I know his will? Right here. Pray till you get a word. Pray till you get a word. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Pray till you get a word about what God is saying about your situation, whatever it is. God has something to say about your situation. Every single one of you in this room, he does. And he loves to talk. 